So today there's a big debate about the roles of men and women and oftentimes Islam is accused of being oppressive towards women or favoring men. How accurate is this and does Allah prefer men over women? No, definitely not. I mean, Islamic scholarship and Islamic texts are very clear. Allah Ta'ala says, We've ennobled the progeny of Adam. Mm -hmm. And scholars, there's no dispute that that includes men and women. And there's very many, many other verses in which there's no distinction in the basic humanity, the basic value, you know, the, the nobleness of the human soul. I think, however, the question, the issue arises because some of the roles, some of the uh, rules that the Sharia enunciates that have something to do with gender. Keep in mind, many of the rules don't have anything to do with gender, mm. right? There's many, many aspects of the Sharia, worship, charity, you know, uh, in fact, most of the aspects to do with worship, fasting, and Ramadan, there'll be some things that are different, but the basic core concept has nothing really to do with gender per se. But where there is a difference, sometimes that is read as problematic, but here's the key point for me, it's read as problematic from an opposing moral lens. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing that people need to understand, you can't really judge a moral position except from the lens of another moral position. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do that first, you need to justify why you're doing that. And a lot of times what happens in our in our popular dominant discourse in the contemporary age, uh, which is an age dominated by secular liberal, secular liberal values, is that those values are just taken for granted to be right. And then you go, well, why, why is this different? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how come this is like this? Oh, you must be oppressing women and whatnot, which is a flawed strategy. Because you could just flip it and say, well, okay, I'm taking the Sharia for granted. And now I'm going to look at you guys and go, why are you doing it that way? Right? Mm. You need to justify that first, or at least that should be part of the discussion. So absolutely not. There's no basic distinction in the humanity of men and women. There are different roles. That's a function of the fact that there are differences, physiological uh, and other differences between men and women. We recognize that. We affirm that. Mm -hmm. I know that's a big issue of debate at, at present. And with other aspects of new debates, new knowledges that come out, I mean, we sh we're not the type to reject it outright, but we're also not the type to just take everything on and run with the flow of the time. Islam is really about critical engagement. There'll be some things that we can learn and pick up and there'll be other things like, no, this is, this is just silly, this is wrong. Mm. Right? Whether for empirical reasons or whether for normative reasons. Again, it's a matter of different moral perspectives and moral values that are being uh, placed in this way. I see. So um, if I could pick at it a little bit and ask you, why is this question so prominent today? Why are people really questioning these roles so much? I think it's a function, again, because certain things become more prominent in the prevalent debate in society. And, and usually that's a function of power, not a function of ethics or knowledge or anything like that. You know, look, look at, for example, the, uh, the situation in the United States. The United States is a superpower of the world. A lot of the things it does get exported, not just, not just goods and movies, but debates, ideas. What's the talking points of the day? And so the American culture wars, which have as, as, a, as a large component discussions around gender, have been explored all over, all over the world. Now, why are they prominent over there? There are historical reasons for that. Uh, the gender question, I think, has become salient, similar to the race question, sexuality question, because of certain historical dynamics that are particular to Europe, and then from the Euro-America, mm -hmm. right, or the West. And I think we need to pay attention to that. Like, it's not natu nothing natural about these questions, nothing mm -hmm. fundamental a big context. or perennial about these questions, right? There are perennial aspects, but the way they manifest are very historical. And so we don't need to necessarily dive into every debate and answer it as if this is, you know, fads of the time, fad questions, fad social debates. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at each thing on its own merits.